That could be pretty much anywhere. It could be in my keep, actually. In, or in Elmshore or somewhere there. And I, can, I think we can buy the last bird for the bard who wants to eat the birds. Let's sit our spoils down a while. Keeping an eye out. Oh, oh. Hello. I'll stay out of sight. Ooh. Ugh. These are uh, nasty enemies. We tried huh? to exarch. Two of them. These are one of my least favorite enemies in the game. Ah, this may be. Not to alarm you. Why? You. My tank is almost dead already. What? So much for you. Hmm? Dead on. We need more nukes. More nukes. What is it? Not I'm good. Doing the job. Set on poison. Sock breathe poison. Poison. Let me fair. Come on, shoot. Oh, you're stunned. Uh, yeah, this is why these are really a nasty enemy. It's a stun for days. Everyone is stunned. That didn't work! Need to try something else! Catman's down! <laughs> no surprise there. Not to a lot. <laughs> Catman's I'm down. Slowly dying in the poison. My whole part of this is still stuck. Edder died. That's not good. Mm. Huh? Been poisoned. They got the priest. Oh shit. Now there is mind control in Sagani. And Eder is uh, confused. Wait. It's no use. I need something stronger. <laughs> the dot killed the leader. Hold on. I think I'm gonna win this. They've got my scent. Point the way. Once all these stunts and shit are over. Hmm? No use. I need something stronger. Damn you, alcoholic. <laughs> Godlike. Always wanting for some stronger. Sure. <laughs> My bow's ready. Hey. They got Sagani. Yeah, that was not a nice group. 
Quiz class, green garb. That is actually very, very nice. Second chance, might. Huge damage reaction and no really recovery penalties. So at least the loot on these guys was actually pretty good. I don't know how to give that though. I would get a lot of reduction, but I like my in int from that. We lost something there. This is Duran's armor. Spell defense bonus, athletic, exceptional. Yeah, this is this green garb is actually much better than that. It's, it's swanky as hell as well. They might get suppressed though, but whatever. He looks epic now. All right then. Off we go. Uh, actually, let's go where we are going next. So we have all the bounties. Let's just return the bounties. In you must gather your party before venturing forth. Come on, doggy. We can rest back here, anyways. Actually, we should uh, go to a proper tavern and get uh, camping supplies as well. I think I'm out of camping supplies. It's gonna be interesting if there's more after this one. Our enemies will find us dead on our feet. It's kind of strange why they are yelling at that when they come back home. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. Someone is just... People will die. I'm sure there must be end to these uh, bounty quests at some point. Should be like 15 bounties now done or something, or 16 even. Once I return these, greetings. Any more? Every outlaw, uh, beast, and charlatan seems to be avoiding Durwood because of you. There we go. So that's all the bounties in the game done. Nope, no even achievement for doing all of those. Yeah, I have no no supplies. Let's see. So I have Songs of the Wild next. Can return those quests. Sagani can be done. And continue journey with Durans, I guess. We can go directly to the... Heart zone. We'll rest here, buy the supplies. We'll return the guard quests on the way. And then we go... Finish Sagani's quest line. I wish Durance's quest line would pop already as well. It's annoying that uh, 
some of the quest lines on these guys are just travel with these guys. It's like, could you play more specific? Please play more specific. Pretty uncool way. Yeah, it is really annoying just saying travel more with these guys. Yeah. It's especially annoying if uh, it's a party member you don't normally use. Would be better if there was a thing pointing somewhere. Welcome! Oops. Camping supplies. Have a sleep there. It, it's just a. Mm, it's time and tide, no. Trials of Durance. Continue the journey with Durance. I guess it must be in the. in the middle location here in this in the burial aisle that's probably where it must pop I mean there's not nowhere else to go soon anymore we've pretty much done everything in the game and that's why I was complaining about the other uh, quest lines as well I mean I'm about to complete the game and uh, their storylines are still dragging on. So it's not very optimal. I might even skip some of the quest lines, like the Grieving Mother. It doesn't seem very interesting in any way. And uh, her quest line is the worst out of all of them. This, uh, learn the gri learn of the Grieving Mother's past. Yay! Perhaps she'll open up more as we our journeys continue. Perhaps not. And uh, she's a cipher, like my own, own class. So I don't really want another cipher in the party because we don't really need two of the same classes. Even though it might actually be OP as hell, com uh, replace uh, Palagina or someone with that. So let's uh, poke the guys. Yeah, that character I have never played. Forget her about totally. Yeah, we, we've just picked her up in the in somewhere in, in in a village, and just stuck him in the keep and never never touched her after that. Yes, yes, I good. Nice. Spray to Galavine. I've come to seek Galavain's favor. The howling beast uh, falls silent, and you hear rustling in the foliage nearby. Something's watching you. Hold back. Something leaves from the bushes nearby. You find yourself pinned on your back and staring into the amber eyes of a massive hound. The beast looks at you. Gleaming fangs protrude from the side of its mouth. Its nose twitches as you it inhales your scent, starting at your shoulder and then proceeding down the length of your arm. You follow its nose to your hand, which is covered in blood. A tongue is... 
red and meaty as the stay claws out of its mouth and swipes your bloody hand. Its lips curl into what looks like a smile. The beast uh, looks back at you and it, as it uh, fixes uh, you with its glowing eyes, its muscle retreats uh, into a long bearded face and its pointed ears lengthen, dropping to the side of its head. What was a massive hound became a giant of man, his broad muscle shoulders draped with furs. He holds a, a flint knife to your neck and grins, reveals a long row, a row of long pointed teeth. Tread carefully. Let my face be a warning sign to always treat Galloway and his messengers with caution and reverence. The lioness reigns still, and soon her cubs will rise. Why did you strike the bear down? Hmm. <laughs> Which option we go with? I like that if Oirnas couldn't could not say his victory, he did not deserve it because that's pretty much what I was saying. Also, the lioness had found an advantage and held it. Her cunning made her um, the more deserving champion. Is also this what I was kind of saying. I'm gonna go with the first one. As I would expect from some, from one uh, so canny. Strength begets strength. The mighty seize an advantage in their jaws and do not let go. They shake and wring it, puncture its arteries with sharpened fangs. Blood whets their appetite. The changeling throws his ba head back and closes his eyes, breathing deeply of the cool air. He lets out a hole that rings through the air. He lowers his head, puffs uh, of steam rising from his panting mouth. Twigs crunch and branches snap. The ground shivers under the weight of pacing, brawling footsteps. A dozen beasts, bears, wolves, and long fanged cats stalk all out of the undercrowd, their matching amber eyes fast on you. Magnificent! As the beasts encircle you, their master rises to his feet. Even the large chest of the bears can only reach his uh, brown and muscle knotted shoulders. You stand mindful of the ring of predators surrounding you. Hmm. You sought and won the favor of Galloway. What new prey do you now pursue? Anteus. To track a quarry, you must understand its movements. And Theos follows the path of a more powerful master. We need to get that actually done on the bot, Sagni. Have options to vote for. A warm breeze carries uh, the smell of smoke and gunpowder. Sparks ignite and float in the draft, catching in the leaves of over Galavin's head. A sudden blast of heat scalds your face, and even as you turn away, the flash of lights uh, sear your vision through your eyelids. When you look back, you see a woman in full plate uh, standing next to Galavin. Her mirror polished armor flickers with images of re reflected flames. You can't see her face, but her voice is strong and clear like a ring ringing of steel. Let him know his foe. No, oh, it's Magran. The whore breaks her silence at last. Have you missed me, Magran? You may have found other lovers, but surely none that was my eagle. Magran says nothing in response. Indeed, she never even glances in Durance's direction. An involuntary tick causes the baggy skin beneath Durance's eyes to quiver. He says no more. His ruddy skin plunged white. Hey, Sandam. Theos has trapped thousands of souls in sun and shadow like rabbits in a snare. Now, he goes there to retrieve the kill for his master, Woodiga. One of the bears paws uh, at the crown in irritation, its uh, hackles uh, rising. She will feast on them, suck their marrow, grow strong on their essence. As Stelgar watches you, it's, it licks its lips, uh, its tongue scraping long fangs. Why would Theos help Vodica? Because he is her hound. He has always done her bidding. Vodica stands for an old order. So does Theos. A golem made of blackened pitted iron steps out of Magran's shadow. 
Its uh, movements are slow yet precise, each footfall accompanied by a groaning and grinding of metal. The steady orange glow of furnace coals emanates from its eye sockets. They both fear change, and the Deerwood has changed much recently. People find answers not in the gods, but in animancy, the product of their own labors. And why not, when they have learned that even a god can be killed? Durance's eyes are wide, his bear is matted with sweat. Was that not as you commanded, my lady? We sought only to stoke your bride by bringing your vision to reality. Magran stands still, unwavering. It is as uh, though she had not heard him at all. Animation doesn't seem to trouble you. Triga seem to look at one another. One of the wolves sits and scratches its neck with a quick stroke of its thin leg. The clash of ideas, the search for answers and meaning. These are other hunts. This is the destiny of Kith. To struggle and transform, even through animancy. And to improve. <sighs> Steady labor and earnest industry elevate Kith above wilder and beast. It is also useful that they should learn to improve their souls, whether through struggle, transformation, or labor. On this, at least, we have no disagreement. If only all the gods followers were as open-minded about animals as you three. <laughs> so why aren't all you guys out celebrating May the 1st? But I am, I am celebrating it here, with you guys, on stream. Here's a cheer for you. Uh, I don't have anything to drink though. One second, we'll fix that. There, now I can raise my glass at you guys, with my green screen drink. Cheers to you. <coughs> what should I do about it? Track Theos. Follow the trail he has left for you, and corner him in sun and shadow. You must stop him before he empowers Wudika. And if you do, you will have a different decision to make. You know what it means to toil quietly while your blisters turn to calluses. You take pride in great labors even when they profit you little. It is fitting that this matter should rest in your capable hands. <laughs> it's nice the laborer background actually affects the talks with the gods. The god of crafting and whatnots, the golem, is like, good dude, you're a good dude, you're a good crafter. Polygina narrows her eyes. Experience with superior officers tells me this is, decision has a right and wrong answer as far as a lot of you are concerned. Souls were ripped from the world, ripe and full and pulsing with essence. Scatter them like bones to a pack of dogs. Their essence will strengthen the souls of the Deerwood. Let the remains of the dead feed the survivors. Why would I feed uh, the lost souls since uh, the rest of the Durwood? To breed strength. Power is born from the mixing of essence and blood. What Theos did cannot be undone. Thousands of lives have changed, and thousands more have ended because of his actions. But transformation gives purpose to trial. And improvement is the goal of all Kith. Long lives, prosperous futures, stronger minds and bodies. Strengthening those who remain will help repair the damage that Theos has done to the Deerwood. I didn't see why I should care. Oh no, let's go. If Vorika can accomplish this, then perhaps she deserves her victory. You make a sound point. If she's victorious, then she will prove herself most capable and most devious of the gods. Here is gaze, cast his gaze away from the clever hound. As his voice drops to a strained whisper, Galvain teaches uh, that one ought to celebrate the fittest of in any struggle. But what good could could possibly come of Vodiga's plan succeeding? The bear at the Galvain's side rises to his hind legs and roars. It falls back on all fours with a ground shaking thud. Galvain points his chipped uh, flint dagger at you. A victory that leaves her ruler of all 
No room for conflict, no struggle, not even between the gods. Be careful what you wish for, mortal. Wodica's ways are regressive. Her laws never change, her authority never ebbs, and she never forgets a slight. Wodica would crush the Deerwood simply out of vengeance for the rebellion against Adir, her favorite. She would stamp out Anamancers, Godslayers from the Saints' War, and anyone else she viewed as heretical or dangerous. So I, I guess I am stepping my game up, Night Basilisk. So I am gonna go and kill a god. Given the previous attempts on our lives uh, by the Leaden Key, we should assume that includes us. I don't see why I should care. Because your soul will be at her mercy, and already you know too much. Woodica will not keep the pact. She will interfere with mortals the very way we have always avoided. Your development will no longer be in your own hands. Stagnation. You will be caged and stunted. Now, I've got to find Teos. And when you descend the pit to Sun in Shadow, you can count on our assistance to see you safely through. As I hope, we can count on yours when you reach the bottom. There are many souls upon the Burial Isle that are sworn to serve us. They belong to you now, and they shall guide your descent. Thank you. Durance's face is grave. Beware the promise of, the, of a god, Watcher. They are binding, but only in one direction. The beasts grow restless, pawing the ground and eyeing you with uh, renewed interest. The bear sniffs the uh, ground next to your leg. One Stelgar skulks in the circle, its amber eyes glowing. Galvin hurls his knife between your feet, sinking it to its handle. He raises his empty hand. Hunt him, mortal. And when you stop him, let the souls he has captured feed the deer wood. Strengthen the souls of those who remain. Prepare them to face the challenges that will follow. Pledge that you will do this, and we will grant you a power fit for the finest warrior who ever lived. Betray us and my beasts shall track you down. Our allegiance is not to be accepted and cast aside. My friend, this is a most auspicious moment. The Lord of the Hunt has spoken to you without omission or riddles. Heed what he said about his beasts seeking you out should you stray from the task. For it is not an empty promise. <laughs> Well, we'll... If we kill one guard, we can kill another guard. Just let them go. I pledge now that I shall convert the captured shells into essence to strengthen the Durwood. The bargain is struck, Watcher. Keep your part. Gavin lunges for you and sinks hatchet into your chest. You cry out, but the pain passes quickly. Energy and power seep into, your, into you through the wound. And when Galvain with her rose, a flesh needs uh, again to contain something warm and pulsing with power. The vision vanishes in an instant, returning you to Tier Evron, where burning candles replace the glowing eyes of the Galvain's beasts. Quest updated. Oh, we got Durance's quest uh, continuing. We need to get the dagger from the guard that she hit through. Hey, Durans. Mm. Have a chat. What is it, Watcher? Does what we learned about Vodica trouble you? Impregnated with hatchet. <laughs> nice sign if. It stinks of her. It is justice. But if her greater purpose was to think Margaret would fall prey to such deceit. And Aethys. Widewind had always claimed to be invading Deerwood to free it. What if it were true? What if he had come to stop Woodica's plot before it began? Surely Aethys earned his death at Godhammer Citadel, but not for those reasons. Not to keep him silent. If such a thing has brought about this chaos... Duran stilled his head, as if listening to an inner voice. Then he frowns. The throne uh, deepening as he speaks. Hey, uh, Punisher. Must we always be tools of gods? If Woodica, 
and Margrin. If they are the cause of this, the Hollowborn, if the purges were never necessary, if Aethys was fighting back. <laughs> More or less, sick fun. That's that's the gist of it. Aethys needed to be stopped, and so does Vodica. I know it had to be done. No, Alright, let's get going. Uh, I feel like that discussion could spell doom. Hey, you. I need you to leave. No. If doubts and curiosity plague you. No, it's fine. Did that complete uh, his quest line? What? If doubts and curiosity, it stinks of her. Surely Aethys earned his death at Godhammer Citadel, <laughs> but not us. for those reasons. Not to keep. Must we always be tools of gods? If Woodica and Margaret, we started saving the Aeothasians from themselves, burning any that didn't die with their god. Heresy in Rayad Ceres is one thing. Heresy here in the Deerwood comes with a more personal touch. Seems just. A wounded enemy is still dangerous. As I see it, every Aeothasian who still lives in the Deerwood puts the nation at risk. Is another dagger held to the throat of our faith? Root them out. Burn them. Or send them back to Red Ceres to wallow in the blood of their failure. I wanted to ask about the region and its history. Do you know anything of the Durwood and the surrounding nations? Uh, let's skip that. Oops. Hmm? If doubts and curiosity, it stinks. Surely, must we always be tools of gods? If then, Woodica and Margaret, then your god hammer didn't save the Durwood. It doomed it. The so many lies. And Woodica. Perhaps she is the next god to fall beneath the god hammer. Would it have been better had you been spared of this knowledge? No, it. I am glad to have walked this far with you. Seen this truth. Perhaps it was what I was meant to see. With a watcher's eyes. All these dances of words and intrigues. Machines of men, twisted, ripping the souls of children, and by the gods, the goddess of justice. If I could end her like Aethys, I... Margren burned her once. One can do so again. Woodica, she must answer to her own justice. Justice or revenge. Anyone with a shred of spirit seeks both justice and punishment. It burns in the heart of anyone who lives. All seek it. If the world does not balance, we all drown in the oceans. And the gods would not care. Margrin, she must be redeemed. And punishing Woodica, that will serve. <laughs> That's not probably gonna fly well. Do we know that Makran was not a willing accomplish? Is this some final joke at my expense? To test my faith further? And why would you think that, Watcher? The others who made the god hammer, they all died, didn't they? That's why uh, I saw their symbols fade from your staff. If all you have are questions, then I have enough of those. She is a bitch of a goddess to be sure, but even a whore only goes so far in crossing those she serves. You said you left Ashfall without telling anyone of, of your departure. You answer a question with a question. 
Then why did I feel her disappointment at Halgot? Why were we shamed? Because I think she tried to kill you there. Kill me? She is a goddess. I still drink from her burning breasts, Watcher. If she wished me dead, she could trace me to my source and kill me. Yeah, Duran says some language. <laughs> in the dream of the Godhammer, your spirit looked blurred, indistinct in the light, as if it had been sheared from you. The Duran stares at you, his expression frozen, but he's li silent, listening. If you had been damaged as I saw in the Godhammer vision, then she may be unable to see you as you once were. Duran turns from you for a moment. His uh, face twists in a thought, conflicting emotions running across his features. Finally, he turns to you, his face steady. There's no proof, Watcher. I was a fool to think you could help me see any farther than I could. If you don't trust me, then trust your staff. I admit that the other god hammer builders are dead. The Duran turns to the staff, and for a moment you see his eyes burning, taking the edges of the wood, symbols inlaid there, the eleven faded circles. They died in the blast, yes. The other eleven. I was the only one to walk away. I thought we had wronged our goddess. That this was my trial, and if I could prove myself worthy, worthy of her, I should have known better. There is only one god of redemption, and I saw him ended. As he studies, studies the staff, you feel a wave of heat, a terrible energy rolling forth in the waves. So much so it feels as if the god hammer itself is alive in his hands. And past it, you hear a cry like a child being born, and your eyes feel flash of white, then hundred imagined shapes of purple and white, streaming and circling in the howling of a storm, and beneath it, the grinding of an ancient machine of, of stone, rock and metal, grinding and turning until you all around you feels like as if it's burning, sinking into the shadows of the earth, beneath the ground, and only the only place where a spirit might find refuge. When your vision clears, you see Duran's his hands clutching the staff, as his eyes are bright, burning red. Atop the staff, the flame burns cleanly, brightly. As his gaze burns, he rips his gaze away and howls, a billowing horrid howl, like a wounded animal, and sweat pours down his brow. We can see that justice is served to her and Bodiga both. To think I served her, I followed her. Now I shall serve no one. Woodica's lies must be answered. And now it seems I must take fire and war from a goddess's false claim as well. I still take from her strength as I did, for as long as it lasts. For I shall not cast her aside yet until I have drained her dry and had my fill, just as she intended for me. For I have learned one of the lessons of the faithful. The faithful may wound a goddess greater than any enemy. A purification is coming, and this fire shall consume them both. Let's go new on. <laughs> well, there's Duran's quest line. Done. <laughs> He's a bit crazy. Just a tiny. Tiny bit. Well. Now we have three gods on the murder list. Next god. Pray to Hylia. You kneel while you pray. Uh, you feel a space. You feel the space around your body shift and melt, and you find yourself in a vision of the mountain top temple. Yet you see neither worshippers nor a dragon, but a tree. Its limbs wrap around the perimeter of the temple, tapering into twigs and branches of all sizes and angles. They seem too long and too numerous to be held up by a meager trunk, but they hold steady in the breeze. A single sparrow lands on the nearest branch. It watches you. <laughs> Throw a rock at the sparrow. <laughs> Hey, you got there, cops. <laughs> I see. Let's whistle to the bird. 
You whistle the first tune that pops into your head. The sparrow blinks its beady eyes and hops closer to you along the branch. It pops its tiny head and opens its beak, and the rich, uh, thrilling melody that fills the fort is the song of the chorus, chorus of the birds. A massive flock descends with thundering wings and whooping, screeching, chirping calls. They fill the bows uh, of the tree by thousands of uh, birds of every shape, size and color nestling next to one another. Palagina sighs heavily. To be honest, I really can't stand birds. A breeze ripples through the air, the limbs sway, creaking with a strange gentle rhythm. A few hundred of the birds uh, flit from their branches, uh, forming a brilliant variegated uh, flock in the front of the tree. As they meet and swoop in unison, you catch a glimpse of someone looking back at you, cloaked by the flurry of feathers. You journey to my temple and rid it of the dragon. Now my faithful may return, singing their joy to the skies and praising me through their creation. I just wanted to kill a dragon. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the truth. A dragon? Yeah, I'll go kill it. The other stuff was just a added bonus. Life is a creation and celebration. I'm glad to have served you in this. The breeze blows through the tree. A doe duck tucks its head into its feathers and watches you. Glad because you seek to protect life, or because you seek a patron. And yet you have proven yourself with this task. I would tell you of another. I already know that Theos X Arcanon has gone to Sun in Shadow to strengthen Boudica with thousands of souls. The birds run to the tree and nestle among their peers. The breeze ripples through the branch again, carrying the goddess's voice. Then you have earned the favor of another. But stopping Theos will not heal the Deerwood. You must guide the trapped souls back to the bodies they were stolen from. Hollow-born children whose eyes have never seen the sun. You could restore them, give their families hymns of joy after years of lament. Peace and restoration give purpose to suffering. There is no meaning, no redemption of in pain that does not lead to fulfillment. Symmetry demands uh, that great rejoicing follow the suffering such as this. Perhaps it would be better to... Uh, I'm not sure if he likes, she likes that. I'm not sure that it's possible to truly undo the harm Theos has caused. Sagani flinches. Surely those wounds can heal, or don't you think uh, the long abscess uh, could be overcome? You hear a cry of a swift, uh, soft and plaintive. Perhaps uh, years cannot be forgotten, and for some perhaps it is already too late. But if you could restore uh, even one soul, kindle one spark of life, raise one voice in joy, it would be worth it. Perhaps it would be better to allow these souls to find new lives. How can they continue to another when they have not fulfilled, uh, fully lived this life? To pass them along to another now is a uh, cutting stanza from a poem, a verse from a song. Thank you, Hylia. I will continue the sun in shadow. When you reach the burial isle, you will find souls there that I have granted reprieve for their sins. I give these to you, for only they can bear you to safety on your journey down. And when you face Theos and the rotting fruits of his endeavors, remember the conversation we have had. In that moment you will have power rivaling a god's. And after it, you will live in the world that you have chosen. Can I, can I just keep the power? Choose Restoration Watcher. Return the souls to the bodies they were stolen from. Swear to me that you will do this. And I shall give you power to make even Woodaka quake. I can be merciful and terrible, Watcher. Mm. If I just promise stuff to every god and just go with my own shit, I, I cannot see that ending too well. I already promised to the other gods that I will... Uh, Strengthen the survivors, not uh, restore the souls. F 
fuck it. I'll, I'll promise to everyone and we'll do what we want. We'll... We'll kill the rest of the guards if necessary. I swear to return the souls to the hollowborn children in the Durwood. And I shall remember. The dark wings in a snapshot and the tiny sparrow flits to your shoulder. It tilts its head back and opens its beak. And the song that uh, spills forth is like nothing you've ever heard. The melody is at once uh, mournful and beautiful and trans you. The world becomes a place of pure color and sound. Each perfect moment uh, follows the next, like lines uh, of a poem or a bar of a song. Wait, I'm not done with you. Your everyday dress, chosen one, yeah. Birds wheel and pivot, showing uh, a flash of pale feathers. Who is it that speaks in anger? You apologize as a man, as well. Now let's go. Please forgive Polish's boldness, Hylia. Passion is but another side of my nature. There is nothing to be to forgive. The birds settle on the branches and regard Polygina. It's not often that any of our kind get the chance to speak to their... What should I call you? My mother? Father? Those words seem to fall short and yet be too generous given our history. You are angry with me. What did you expect? Should I be happy? To be like this? To live like this? What kind of creator does this to her creation and abandons it in a world this cruel? And should I have plucked you from your homes, wrapped you in my wings, and brought you to nest uh, like this one? Some tranquil and harmonious place, uh, far from the war chants and battle dances you love so well. Tell me what you want. All I've ever wanted from any of your kind is to take some responsibility, any responsibility, for what you've done to us, to every one of the children you've abandoned. You are a song of ferocity, and one I love well. I hear your fear and rage, and it is music. Your prowess and valor leave a, a trail like a tapestry upon the world. I would not dampen your song, even with the conform comfort of my wings. What does that mean? Come back here! There is no response. Polygen's fist clench in frustration. Is there actually a discussion with all the gods uh, with some of these characters? I'm sorry you didn't get the answers you were looking for, Polygena. You deserve better. We all deserve better. Oh, nice. I'm gonna pop the toilet, I'll be back in a second. As you wish.
And I'm back. Let's go. Oh no! Pandits to took my money. Next card, Braid of Berath. As you Braid of Berath, you find yourself on the road. Squinting in the distance, you see a short, pale figure waiting for you. At first you think uh, it's uh, another vision of Archer Dreshin, but then you notice the figure's skeletal frame and rictus screen. He stands in front of another skull gate, but the way leads down, not onward. He beckons you to approach. Behind you is a woman, her skin milk pale against her black hair. He wears a suit of armor so dark it seems to suck the light from the stars. The road winds up to a mountain behind her. A tall traveler. Follow the Usher. Times of rap songs. Pay the pale at night. Let's pay the pale at night. You drop a few coppers in her hand and she closes her fist around the coins. You instantly feel a small weight added to your purse. Lord of this road demands a toll of all. But he lends generously, that the all might travel his road again. Behind her, the Usher grins his lipless smile and waits. The road pours into a mo the mountain, and you find yourself in a gigantic cavern. The ceiling curves uh, up and away, and it's dotted with uh, moisture. At this distance, the shining beads look like stars, clustered and scattered in constellations. The Usher and the Pallid Knight lead you up a uh, trail carved into the edge of the cavern. Two identical cave mods wait up, up, head, up ahead, and you follow the Usher to one of them. Standing at the edge and gazing down, you see an endless, ever chasing plane bisected by a uh, road. Uh, can you close the door? Only then do you realize that you are no longer on the road. As you follow the road to the point where it disappears below you, you realize that uh, you are standing in one of the eye sockets of a massive skull. The Usher points to the road. Arshur Restin appears below you. He's just as you remember him, stern and smooth-skinned. Yet with each step along the road he grows, swelling with blood and essence. His heavy steps have become slower and slower until he stops altogether. His distended uh, body fills the path completely. You met a dwarf traveling this road. What did you do? Hmm. Restin had stood in place for too long. I merely set him moving again. The Polite Knight's flesh is thought against her skull. She nods once, barely dipping her chin. Life is kinetic. Forward motion. A hundred beginnings and endings nested within a million more. As Restin's swollen body ruptures, the effect is like a dam bursting. Ghostly figures as hazy and insty. D indistinct as wisps of smoke continue along the clear path. Some tumble and rush along, while others uh, amble and drift, but all continue forward. The usher directs your attention to another figure following down the path. This time you see high await Erona. As she, she uh, follows the road, her movements uh, become slow and erratic. Her legs creak with each step, and her feet grow long, thick roots that burrow into the ground. She finally stops rooted in place. You found a tree that had lived for centuries. Its roots were deep, and its boughs sheltered many. I enjoy cutting Why did down. you cut it down? <laughs> Trees don't belong in the road. I thought that if I had cleared the tree, maybe Lord of the Road would grant me a boon. It was a parasite. While its branches sheltered others, its roots sucked them dry. All draw their life's energy from the deaths of others. This is why all must remain part of the cycle of death and rebirth. No creature may be a closed loop unto itself. Erona's body petrifies below, and the shimmering leaves of her hair blow down the path. You seek another who has lived his lives on the brink of the cycle. He sits on the inside of the wheel, observing its revolutions. With each life he is plucked from the stream and returned to it intact. Why do you hunt Teos? 
Theos has entrapped thousands of souls for Vodica. I've got to stop him bef uh, from giving her absolute power. If you know this much, then another god has already spoken with you, and given you half of the answer. Theos serves Vodica. She desires an escape from her own cycle, power without decline. Theos has removed uh, thousands of souls from the cycle, so their actions might empower her. You must stop him, and you must return them to the cycle. What end would it serve to send the souls back into the cycle? Attending uh, to these souls is a question of stability, Watcher, of maintaining the natural order of the world and the ebb of the flow of the and and the and the ebb and the flow of the essence. Couldn't they be returned to Holoborn? As battered burned things, do you mix sourd wine with a uh, fresh? The kindness you seek is lo lo seek lies in giving them a new beginning, nothing shackling them to this life. I agree with this guy. If Theos has meddled with these souls, perhaps it would be better to destroy them. The cycle is merciless but not wasteful. Time and the endless procession of rebirths eventually grind the souls into dust, but until then they must pass from the world and return to it. Their continuing movement advances the cycle itself. The cy cycles are changeless and monotonous. Surely there is a better alternative. The illusion of a revolution. It is merely a part of another cycle, and a painful one. True change has structure, geometry. It is a product of cycles within cycles, a thousand ge gears uh, spinning and moving the universe by a decree. Uh, decrees. What's wrong with Vodica seizing this power? The cycle of Kith uh, is the thing of balance. Likewise is the cycle of gods. We rise and fall in the favor of mortals, only to fall and rise again. But Vodica seeks the power to place herself outside of this cycle. She would root herself and grow to detriment of others. The usher silently gestures to the road, where a broken tree and husk of flesh are still visible. I understand. I think I understand what you are telling me. The usher gestures to the road, and the story expands beyond the pallid night speaks. I only show you the motion of the universe, Watcher. Why does Vodica even need Theos' help, and why do you need mine, for that matter? The gods guide souls through the cycle of death and la uh, rebirth, but Eora is the domain of mortals. We stand aside, weights and counterweights. We are one to alter the tides of Kith. Where we were one to alter the tides of Kith, all would follow. We would tip the, this world from its axis. That is why Vodiga directs a mortal to do her bidding, and why any who would stop Theos must be a mortal as well. I don't see why what this has uh, to do with me. Theos builds a, a dam to divert water from stream. The flow of thousand souls will shape the world you live in, Watcher. It will also shape the world your soul returns to in the next lives. I must go to Sun in Shadow now. No mortal can survive the descent into the pit. But there are souls on the burial isle that are pledged to me. I will grant them to you, and they shall bear you down safely. As well as light the way beyond. A multitude appears at the other end of the road, raising their voices and kicking up dust as they make their way toward you. Return them to the cycle watcher, promise that you will, and I shall give you power bit fitting the champion of death. The Polynice raise a finger. Accept my favor, however, and I will demand this decision as your due. I collect all from all mortals in time. I promise to return the souls to the cycle. So be it, Watcher. Do not forget your promise. The Usher reaches out and places a bony hand on your forehead. His touch overwhelms you, and you feel yourself expand. Blinded, you reach out, only to find another gasping hand uh, of same size and shape as yours reaching back. When at last uh, you open your eyes again, you are standing in Tier Ebron, filled with Berat's power. I just noticed that it actually 
removes the other boon and you get the other one. Yep, you get the boon you agree on. So far, I've liked uh, Galavain the most, what to be honest. It? There's still a room guard to go. 